In this example, we're going to show a tutorial for a two-span, one-way slab that's reinforced without post-tensioning, and we're going to be using ADAPT PTRC version 2018. This version was released on October 26th, 2018. First thing we'll do is select the option for RC, and then I'll select OK. And, and the program interface will open. We need to go ahead and define our unit system and also our design code. So we're going to select uh, American Unit System. The design code we'll be using will be ACI 318-2014. That's set here. And then I'm just going to select File New. And we're going to select the option for one-way slab. When we select this, some of the inputs here will change. We have the ability to model conventional or segmented um, construction of the spans. This means Segmented allows you to do non-prismatic. You can have varying thicknesses, varying widths of a slab. We're going to model something fairly simple, just a two-span, one-way slab spanning between walls. So we're not going to be using transverse beams. We'll set that to no. We will use conventional input, and um, we're going to be also using the option to recommend a slab thickness. If you want to uh, study the use of segmented or transverse beam, we have additional videos on our YouTube channel that you can check out for um, some varying uh, some varying examples of what these other conditions do. So we'll go ahead and select Next. Here we again see the design code selected as ACI 31814. You can change uh, to additional design codes if you change the unit system to SI then the other design codes will become available and you can always convert unit systems from tools convert units and you would uh, select the unit system you want to convert in. I'll go back to design settings now. Uh, we're going to reduce moments to face of support. We're also going to select the option to redistribute moments. The program will show us reinforcement with and without redistribution and also redistribution factors. The equivalent frame method is turned off for one-way slab. It only applies to two-way slabs. If we wanted to increase the moment of inertia over the support um, for purposes of our stiffness, we could always select yes here and it includes a portion of the support for the stiffness entry for that location in that design section. For design options, we're going to use all the provisions of the code. If we wanted to ignore the calculation of minimum reinforcement for a one-way slab, we could, use, we could set that here by selecting disregard and then selecting this option. We'll go ahead and say next. Now we'll set up our geometry. So we're going to do two 25-foot spans. We'll select number of spans equal to two. These are both prismatic spans. The section type is rectangular. If I select this icon, you can see that the section type that can be input could be T-section, I or an L-section, or an extended T-section. So for length, we'll do 25. And then for the height, you can see that the program is um, is recommending a 12 and a half foot or a 12 and a half inch thick slab. We're going to actually reduce that down. To 10, so we can override that value if needed. And then the width, we're going to base this on a unit strip. So the slab itself might be 20 feet wide, 30 feet wide, 40 feet wide, but it's continuously supported. And if I draw this, we might have a wall and a wall and a wall. And these walls might be, you know, continuously supported this direction. And then the slab is spanning this direction. So we don't really need to model the entire width of the slab, we can model just a unit strip of the slab and we're going to say that that unit strip is actually 12 inches wide. So I'll go ahead and model a 12 inch wide strip. We'll turn on the structure view. Okay, and the reference height I'm going to say is zero. If we wanted to step one of the slabs, we could use the reference height equal to uh, whatever input. For example, if I wanted to um, change the reference height, let me go ahead and make this sure that this is set properly. So this should be 25 and 25. If I wanted to move this span up by five inches, 
I would just enter 5 and that span gets shifted vertically by 5. So that allows us to set the reference height relative to this datum. Okay, we'll go ahead now and set our support. So we're going to use a lower wall. The height of the wall will be 12 feet and the, um, the dimension of the wall is going to be 12. That's just the dimension of our strip in the out of plane direction. In this direction we're going to say that the wall is 8 inches thick. So we have a wall segment here that equals the width of the of the slab. If I for example wanted to extrapolate this slab and extend it either direction what I could do is go back to my geometry and I could input a multiplier. So the multiplier there's a multiplier left and a multiplier right. The multiplier left is this side, the multiplier right is this side. Imagine standing here and looking this way. And so now we're taking 0.5 times 12, so 6 inches to one side, 6 inches to the other. If I wanted to, I could say, well, I want to multiply the slab by um, 10 feet. So I'll just do this maybe times, um, times 10 on one side and I could do you know 10 on the other side and now I have a 20 foot slab and if I was to go next I could then adjust the length of the uh, wall in that direction right now it's only 12 uh, 12 inches so I might actually change that for example to 240 okay but we're gonna just go back to our uh, unit strip example and I'll make sure that these are reset to 0.5 and 0.5. I'll collapse that. Okay, so we have our support set up. The boundary conditions, I'll go back to a view here. This, these, these icons here allow you to control the view. I could change the perspective of the view, 3D or isometric. A free rotate perspective view. I could go to wireframe, transparent, shaded with solid or shaded with outline. And then I can turn off and on certain components. For example, I could turn off the slab, columns, this is drop panels, loads, rebar, etc. So there's tools here that control the structural view that we're looking at. Um, the supports and boundary conditions, if I look at this, this is lower column near and lower column far. We have no upper columns, so this doesn't apply. One is fixed, two is pinned, three is a roller. So lower column near is this joint slab to support. Lower column far is the far end support, so that's fixed, fixed. And then these are both fixed also. That's set in this block here. The support width dictates how the program reduces to face of uh, support. So right now the support uh, width is 8 inches. It equals the width entered for the column support. You can modify that if you deselect this option and you can come here and modify the support width. In the loading, the loading is fairly self-explanatory. In this loading we're going to actually input a line load versus a uniform load. But each load is shown here with the different variables for the loading. If you want to enter a load you can drag and drop a load or you can just put in the second character if I type for example U, P, C and so on it will fill out the different variables that have to be identified for that load type. I'll go ahead and right click and delete those. So we're going to use a line load um, for this example and we're going to assume the loading is 20 PSF dead load and that's uh, superimposed dead load and 50 PSF live load. So we'll go and select for span 1 and then I'll enter span 2. We'll say this is line load and line load or excuse me live load and live load and then we'll say L for line. Okay so P1 this is going to be the value so this uh, will be the point, um, 0 0.02 and that's kips per foot. This is going to be 0 0.05 kips per foot. Since we're only designing a one foot strip, if I take the 0 0.02 PSF multiplied by one, I get 0 0.02 and 0 0.05. So these are the loads. Actually, these should be swapped. This is 0 0.05 
0 0.05, and 0 0.02. Okay, we can also choose to skip the loading. So um, if you wanted to have the program produce an envelope of live load skipping, we can choose the option to skip. For this example, I'm going to select no to skipping. The program will place live load on both spans without any alternating of placement. Um, by default, the program will consider the self weight of the slab. If you wanted to turn this off and then input the self weight directly using a load case identifier, you could then enter a self weight here. I'll go ahead and select yes. We're going to include that. If you do go back and include it, it will delete the self weight entries in the loading input. The concrete strength will use the defaults 4000. One thing to watch out for here is if you change this, you need to press enter to update the modulus. So otherwise, if you don't, the modulus will stay the same and you could also manually override it. The program considers cracking. It checks for crack, uh, cracking in slabs and beams and also it will calculate long-term crack deflection. So the long-term deflections are actually calculated using this creep coefficient um, applied to sustain loading and so the user needs to make sure that this is a proper entry based on the time at which the the long-term deflections are going to be um, assumed calculated. So here we're going to leave the default as 2. We'll select next. For the bars we're going to use 60 KSI for both shear and longitudinal reinforcement. The size of the bar for the uh, slab, we're going to use number fives and number sixes. And then for shear reinforcement, we'll use number fours. This likely won't be required, but we have to define this anyway. And the number of legs, we'll say, is two legs per 12 inches. We're not going to include any base reinforcement for this example. If you did include base, we would select yes and the program would allow us to input uh, mesh, isolated, and stirrup reinforcement, so uh, shear reinforcement. This would be if the user wanted to enter reinforcement and then have the program consider that reinforcement in the um, in the calculations and add any additional that's required, they could enter this input here. Okay, the cover that we're going to use is just one inch. The clear cover for the side doesn't apply to ACI. This applies to uh, Canadian code, so this can be left as zero. And um, the development length of reinforcement required for strength, this is an extension that the program will add to bars beyond the point of zero moment where it's no longer required. So this, this is just an imposed extension of the reinforcement. If we select yes, the user can also uh, input curtailment requirements. So if you wanted to customize how the bars are detailed and laid out, you can utilize the, the curtailment. By default, it's set to ACI 318. If you wanted to change this, you have to go to user defined and then you can modify based on this. If you go to adapt, the output here reflects um, what's shown in the table. This is actually L over 6 to either side of this, the support and L over 3 to either side of mid-span, which is really for a two-way, um, this is more for a, like a two-way PT slab. So you would, have to, you would have to manipulate this. Once you manipulate it, you could save it. You could save this particular set of curtailment um, requirements and then another user could always open those and load those in. So there's ways to set up and customize curtailment. We'll select no to that. And then we have our load combinations. The program will evaluate by default the top two combos. You have the ability to enter additional two combos for gravity or enter this value for gravity plus lateral. And then the program will evaluate two service combinations. The service combinations would be evaluated for deflections essentially for this um, RC slab. We'll go ahead and select OK and then we'll go to File and Save the Structure. So now we're going to go ahead and execute the model for reinforcement. Now that the input is done, we'll go here to the Save Execute Analysis tab or select the option to execute. Once the analysis is completed, the program will go into what's called shell mode where we have the ability to review graphical results, for example, for deflections. 
This includes the um, the long-term and cracked effects for the system. This is service envelope total versus service sustained total deflections. We can also look at individual load case deflections here. We can look at shear diagrams for the same sets of load combos or uh, or the envelope of combos and also load cases and the same for bending moments. If we select the option next to this called Builder Sum, this allows us to review results for individual load combinations or for the envelope. So this is really the um, the best way to summarize the design. If we select the envelope and then we select the option for Summary Report, we now have a nice visual summary of the outcome of the design. So we have the top rebar, bottom reinforcement, required versus provided rebar. If there's any shear requirements that would be shown here. With more detail we can look at the tabular results for shear and determine how much reinforcement is required and at what spacing and then design parameters, quantities, and finally a deflection report both graphical and also in um, tabular form. If we wanted to uh, produce a drawing file for this particular run we can select the DXF option. We can set up the settings here in the DXF option and create the DXF and the program will then launch AutoCAD to show the drawing based on the settings in this dialog. And once this drawing is produced you can see the program will show an elevation with dimensions, um, support widths, and then the, the disposition of the reinforcement in the uh, system. Now this is scaled vertically by a factor of 12 so if we reduce that factor then we wouldn't see the rebar this thick nor the nor the slab. If you have any questions about the drawing file or the summary report, you can always contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Going back to the output, the final thing we can do is if we close the builder sum, we can go to the tabular report. So the tabular report allows us to generate, for example, compact or detailed reports. Compact might be thought of as a zonal report, left, center, right, tabular, Detailed would be something along the lines of section report, so every design cut along each 20th point of each span. A concise report includes some predefined report settings here. Here we're going to go to tabular just for example and show the shear reinforcement, both mild redistributed and non-redistributed steel, and then deflections. So we can save a selection to a customized report. We can go here to create new report or browse saved reports. I'm just going to create a new report from this selection. And this will launch as an RTF document in Word. We're looking at block 10, mild steel, no, re no redistribution, mild steel redistributed, which shows us the required steel if the moments are redistributed. This will also show us um, provided and required still disposition and then shear reinforcement. This is broken up again on 20th points required and spacing here there's no requirement and finally the report that we produced also contained deflections. So any number of different types of reports can be produced tabular uh, using the tabular output. If you go to detailed for example we might want to look at the demand capacity and moment capacities this is a like a DCR report so we'll produce this and for each 20th point along both spans this shows us the demand and capacity in a ratio and so you can see the demand capacity ratios for positive and negative locations and the actual values on each 20th point. This is based on the user defined rebar plus calculated rebar in our case, we didn't use or define any reinforcement. We only had the program generate the reinforcement. So you'll see some locations where the demand capacity is near one. This would indicate that the strength requirements control versus a demand capacity that's less than one. Here we have demand capacities around 25% um, less than the unity. So this would indicate that uh, strength doesn't control, but minimum requirements control.
If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com.